Hey everyone, and welcome back to a new video. Today, after a week of using the brand new PNYR TX5080 OC Epic X and learning how it behaves across the entire voltage frequency curve, I'm going to show you how to get a performance boost while simultaneously reducing power consumption. Moreover, in this case more than ever, I'll show you a little program that truly makes a difference when it comes to intensive GPU usage. It allows you to control the fan operation and customize the fan curve to your liking. In particular, this refers to fan control in its V2.18 version. Once in the dashboard, we can create a custom tile where we specify the minimum temperature we want the GPU to reach, the maximum temperature, the minimum fan speed, including zero, and the maximum fan speed. Additionally, we can set the hysteresis, which is the minimum temperature delta required for a change to occur. It can be set as both positive and negative or only negative. For example, in my case, where the minimum temperature is set to 30 to degrees C, once my GPU reaches 37 degrees C, with a hysteresis of 5 degrees C, the fans start spinning to bring my GPU back to 30 to degrees C. Really cool. That said, my RTX 5080 has two specific controls for adjusting the fans, and with the fan control software, we can even create our own custom curve deciding exactly how many RPM should be set at specific usage percentages. These percentage values are also fully customizable. If you enjoy the video, I invite you to subscribe to the channel, leave a like to support the creation of new content, and click the notification bell to stay tuned. But now, let's move on and begin the undervolting process using MSI Afterburner, an essential yet comprehensive tool for accessing all the settings that modern GPUs offer to the end user. Once we open the curve editor, Let's carefully examine my voltage, frequency curve, referring to the specifications of the PNYR TX5080 OC Epic X. We keep in mind that the boost clock can reach up to 2780 MHz. Now, our goal is to achieve good FPS performance while keeping both temperatures and power consumption under control. According to the specifications, the GPU has a TGP of 360 watts. In this case, I want the maximum power draw to be around 330 watts. After this brief introduction, let's examine the voltage, frequency curve I created, taking into account all the parameters I mentioned earlier. At a hypothetical frequency of 2830 MHz, my RTX 5080 requires a stock voltage of approximately 1015 MV, and based on the tests conducted, it draws between 360 and 400 watts, depending on load intensity. With my configuration, However, we set the GPU to use a maximum voltage of 950 MV at a frequency of 2836 MHz. By applying an undervolt of approximately 50 MV to the frequency we have chosen as our target in this way, we proceed by resetting the factory fused voltage frequency curve. First, position the mouse pointer over the small square, indicating 950 MV on the x-axis. Follow the grid until you find the intersection point with the voltage frequency curve. In my case, by looking at the y-axis, we can see that we are just below 2700 MHz. Click the corresponding square with the left mouse button, and, while holding down the Alt key, move the entire voltage frequency curve until it intersects approximately 2400 MHz on the y-axis. At this point, focus your attention on the left portion of your voltage, frequency curve, while holding down the C, T, or L key along with the right mouse button. Pull up the lower end of the voltage, frequency curve to prevent undervoltage issues that could cause your GPU to crash. In this case, drag the end up by about 15-18% beyond the y-axis. Now, let's go back to the voltage of 950 MV on the x-axis, find the intersection point with the voltage, frequency curve, right-click on the representative square, and drag it upward along the x-axis until we reach the desired frequency which in this tutorial is 2836 MHz. We're almost there, guys. Right-click on the empty area of the voltage, frequency curve, and while holding down the shift key along with the right mouse button, move to the right, covering the entire area until you reach the end of the graph. Here, you have two different ways to flatten the voltage, frequency curve. One, first method, press shift plus enter twice. Two, drag a point on the voltage, frequency curve down to the right until it goes past the x-axis, and that's it. Finally, we can increase the power limits and apply a performance boost to the memory clock. In this case, start at 200 MHz and increase it until you reach the desired value. My RTX 5080 
can handle up to 2000 MHz without producing artifacts, but for everyday gaming, I recommend staying within the 200-500 MHz range to avoid stressing your hardware. If you just want to play around with numbers and benchmarks, here you go. With a frequency of 3000 MHz, power limit set to 110, and memory clock set to plus 2000 MHz, I scored asterisk asterisk 32010 asterisk asterisk in time spy. Once you have created your own voltage, frequency curve with the desired undervolt, it is advisable to test system stability with Fermark, Heaven, and Threed Mark. Finally, it is good practice to ensure that the applied undervolt remains stable in games as well. That's all for this video, guys. If you have any comments or doubts, I'll be more than happy to help. Cheers, and see you next time.